DC Coates, he's a writer for The Atlantic, and late in life he decided he wanted to learn French. So he actually went to France and was learning French, and he was not a good student when he was a kid. And he was talking about stuff that really resonated with me. Primarily, what I really liked was that it's really hard to learn stuff. It really sucks to go into a place and not know anything. And to have to do that constantly required like a toughness on his side. And I'm not, I don't necessarily consider myself a tough person, but I did think that there's some truth to that. It's hard to learn stuff, and it's hard to be humbled, and it's hard to bounce back from that and believe that you can do it. So that's why I included this quote, uh, just because I liked to talk about it. It was finally good to actually look it up. And so who am I? Uh, I mean, this isn't really necessarily related to the internship, but to give you some context, I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, when I showed up in the interview, I talked about Twin Peaks, but I would have talked about Lord of the Rings if I could have. Also, I like bonsai. I just got into it when I was came into Des Moines. I went down to the botanical gardens and checked the, the, the bonsai and the bonsai club. It's pretty amazing. And recently, I've gotten interested in bees. Uh, I haven't actually started reading into it yet because I've been doing the bonsai thing, but that's pretty much. Where I come from, I uh, also should include programming in retrospect, but just include that in part of this talk, because right now I'm learning Python. So here's some questions. I don't know if I answer all of these by the time I get to the end of the slides in retrospect. I should have checked to see if they're one-to-one, -one, but I'm sure if anyone's got questions at the end, we can go over them. Um, from what I understand, I'm not supposed to just read the questions aloud to you, so here are some questions. So. Why programming? And I love Tron. I guess I should have included that too earlier. Uh, well, I started off as a janitor and worked my way up to gift wrapper in the same company. And then I worked my way up to computer store inventory clerk slash books, bookstore dock worker, also in the same company. Uh, then I went off to become a university transfer crypt office clerk, video game tester. And that's right around when I met my fiance and she moved to Des Moines. And I was like, yeah, we should start dating out. And eventually I moved to Des Moines. And moving to Des Moines, I was faced with like a couple challenges. One that, as you can see, I don't necessarily have what I feel like the best career to start off in a new town. First of all, bookstores are kind of on their way out. And uh, so, I mean, that left me in a real situation where I had to think about what I was going to do when I came out here. Because I was going to come out here, and I was hoping it was going to be more of an opportunity than some kind of crushing like experience. And, Right around then, I was listening to Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. I don't know if you've heard about that. Viktor Frankl was this guy who was in a concentration camp. Admittedly, his circumstances were much more dire than my own. But I found what he like learned in that process to be really like really cool and relevant for like dealing with stressful situations, which is to survive and thrive, people needed hope. They needed to like believe in the future. And so, you know, kind of like, I've got a wife now, or I will have a wife soon, so I need to start thinking about things. And just the experience of coming to Des Moines, you know, really gave me like the perspective that I don't ever really want to have it be hard for me to go to another place again. You know, like I want to feel confident that I can go to a place and it wouldn't completely financially cripple me. Or I'll have the flexibility to go to a place I want to go and have opportunities there. And that was a big, that was a real big chunk of like what brought me into wanting to go into programming in Des Moines. I have, a, I feel like a better opportunity than I do in a place like Seattle, where I'm from, because there's sort of a dearth of programmers there. But out here, as I feel like my circumstances prove, people are willing to take a chance on a guy who, in retrospect, damn wow, I didn't do a lot of programming. But so I just looked this up in the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I thought this was also a good reason to become a programmer. But obviously, you, know, you don't do it purely for the money. But it's cool. Cool statistics. I like that the job outlook is 17%, much faster than average. So, I mean, these are all really good practical reasons. But I mean, it kind of came down to before I left, I was like, I need, I need to have a purpose. I need to have a goal. And so I thought, well, my friend wants to make a video game. What do I need to do to do that? Like, I went to him and I said, what do I need to do to help you make a video game? And he essentially said, become a developer. I said, all right, let's do it. And every time I walked around the place, I was going to tell people. I'm going to be a developer so I can help my friend make his game. I still want to do that. Python isn't, it turns out, necessarily the language, but I think learning the foundation of the language is much more applicable for doing other things afterwards, or just the foundation of programming. Um, 
So I had some weird analogies, and I'm still gonna subject you to them, but I want you to know I understand they're weird. But like, in terms of like physics, I was just thinking that my life had t career wise taken on sort of inertia. Like I've been going in one direction for a long time, and I had a lot of inertia invested in that. And course correction would take a lot of time, which brought me to IMDb's all time favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption, because there's this great line in there where he talks about like to get things done, it takes pressure and time. You know, and maybe you know years. So when it when it comes back comes back around to internships, I'm kind of saying I'm going to spend years doing something in the hopes that I can like have some drastic change. And that's kind of one of the challenging things about internships is doing that. And what was most useful? Oh, um, right off the bat, I would say mentors. Um, I would say Caleb, but he's on the next slide. Um, but really just working with people in an actual professional context, um, being forced to be the one who's doing the typing as someone kind of tells you what to do and they get frustrated with you because you're typing incredibly poorly because you're using them. And uh, also, I feel like projects were incredibly useful, uh, just like side projects. This is, this is this, uh, I was messing around with a Twitter bot this weekend, uh, last weekend, and it was, I call it BotSide. And all it does, I know there's not a lot of room there, is it just, uh, right now, it just generates three tarot cards. And like, it just got increasingly compl complicated because it's like, what if they're inverted? I mean, originally it was gonna be taking text from Plato's The Republic and doing like 140 characters at a time, but I was like, I'm not really sure if that's legal. Like, I found the text of Gutenberg, but who knows? But yeah, I just found that being interested in something and kind of just going after it to be really helpful. And uh, like this whole this whole thing started because there's a guy out there who's a glaciologist who has a bot on Twitter that every day uh, adds more lyrics to the uh, Gaston song from Beauty and the Beast. It's called a uh, Botston, and he has another one that just generates maps, fantasy maps, and with fantasy language on them. And I was just like, oh, I want to do that. So I did the part. I, I like started at the. I started. I was like, well, if I broke it down, maybe the bot thing will be immediately doable. And it is. It's actually surprisingly easy. Uh, what was the least useful? You know, it's just being polite, being considerate, and being kind of intimidated by people. Like, it's not really helpful to you to be like really in, like shut in and not necessarily going out and talking to people, or even people you're scared of or asking for help. Like, asking for help is terrible, especially if you just ask for help to get you the step you're on, and then you need some more help to get to the next step. But you know, that's being, not wanting to bother people, it really gets in the way. And then uh, in another sense, just passivity. I think that maybe that's more of a life thing, but when you're an intern, you know, you're on a clock. Your clock's timing down. You don't really have time to kind of just be going with the flow and, you know, if nothing's going on, just kind of chilling out. And then, admittedly, I'm guilty of probably both of these things, but I can understand that they're wrong and that you, know, you should strive for better. But that's one of the hard things about being an intern too, is you're the intern, you have no status, or really, everyone's kind of your boss, and you don't want to be bothering them because they're clearly doing something important, but you got to. Uh, TPD is rad. I know maybe I'm late to the party on this because it's been around for like, I don't know, 20 years, but it's really cool, and I, which I learned it a lot sooner. I think it would have changed my experience. So I studied some programming in uh, college, but we didn't do TDD. And I don't know, it just seems like, I read some books on it also as part of the internship. And I mean, I'm sold, I think it's great. Um, so I mean, I'm still impressed right now about TDD. And then I also learned some things about the tools of the trade, like Vim and GitHub and Stack Overflow. I mean, Vim is, Oh man, Vim was a nightmare. It still kind of is, but as I get a little bit better at it, it's been really enjoyable being able to at least be like, okay, well, I know how to grab all this line and move it over there. And then we just hired someone new who's also new to Vim, so I can like give them advice, and that's been pretty great. Uh, and GitHub, I don't know, I was reading the history of GitHub, and it was pretty interesting about BigKeeper and Linus Torvald and how he created GitHub because they wanted like an open source thing. I mean, I don't know, it's also, I've been stumbling on through Wikipedia, like huge histories of things, like the editor war and like Unix wars, and things with really cool names. And Stack Overflow, which apparently my boss had once, I think one of my bosses described as one of the best devs on the team. 
Uh, so this is what Caleb told me. He took me aside one day and uh, gave me some advice. I think it's pretty good, so much so that it takes up at least a big chunk of the presentation. Basically, go bother people. And he also told me to like tell him to shut up when I think he's wrong. Unfortunately, I'm not really confident I'm right, or I haven't been for like the last four or five months, so that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. And be willing to force the situation to your advantage, and that kind of goes back around to, I got to go talk to somebody who's got headphones in. Like, the worst thing you can do at work, you know? But I got to do it, because this is really, in a weird, selfish way, I've got to be like taking advantage just because, like I said, I got, my entire experience is on a timer. Um, this was a weird question that I included that I felt like I should answer. Um, there's newspapers all over IMT, and they're from all over, like from like 100, 100 years or so. And one of them had an advertisement for this movie. And we were like, is this a real movie? And it turns out it is, and the trailer is awesome. Like, it's worth looking into if you guys are like interested in bad movies. So then I heard that every talk is supposed to end with a call to action. So I thought well, I'd go really extreme and say, quit your jobs and become interns. And well, quit your jobs, move to a new city, and become interns in something you're not experienced with. And uh, I mean, that's, I don't see a lot of you taking that up because it's honestly a bad idea unless you're in a situation like where I started. Um, I guess a better way of going about it is that mentoring someone is really helpful for them, and I think I'd like to think helpful for the people who are doing the teaching. And I've been really lucky at IMT where everyone's been really cool about me asking questions and asking for advice. And it's I don't know, it's been a really great experience. And I hope this the presentation wasn't too short because this is the last slide. <laughs> um, so yeah, did anyone have any questions? What experience, what programming experience did you have before you, you went into I know you said that you took a programming class or two in college. Uh, yeah, uh, in college I studied C, uh, C and C++, and then for a while I was do, I was doing, uh, I was trying to do C Sharp through Project Euler. So that was pretty much where I spent a lot of my time. Um, Project Euler got kind of weird because it got really math heavy. Like after a while I was spending a lot of time not even looking at coding stuff, just trying to figure out what they're talking about. But that was primarily it. I did. I had a little bit of like experience, at least in one code jam, like one 24-hour code jam, but not a lot. That's pretty much the entirety of it. Yeah. You mentioned uh, really like ETD. Yeah. Was it like an aha moment for you, where it seemed like that was the right thing to do, or were you sold from the very get-go? Well, the thing that I thought really interesting about TDD is I felt like, at least in the academic environment and to some degree, I'm sure, in the real world, that seemed to be the way people actually did stuff. They would do things, and then they would kind of run it and saw if it work. And it just felt like the actual like codification of that process, which was the only way I figured out, I figured stuff really worked anyway. But you know, when I read the, when I read it too, they were also super persuasive. Like the sped up feedback cycle, like it's incredible. Or uh, just the making the small ch the incremental changes over time. Or, you know, there just seems to be absolutely no downside to it other than there are situations where you can't easily test things, and there's sort of a discipline required to actually make yourself start with the test. But, yeah, no, I mean, that was, that was a pretty easy convert. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty impressionable. And in an internship environment, and I went to a TVD place, I was pretty quickly converted. But it just seems like it just makes sense, and it seems like a really great way of going about things. So what would you change if you could? I think if I could, well, like, if, like, I guess I could answer that in tears. Like if I had like a time machine, I would definitely be doing, uh, well, taking advantage of more of my friends doing like uh, code jams and you know, hacker rank. I found out about that later. Or even learning like an editor. So if I had like that perfect, like I woke up tomorrow and it was four years ago, if I woke up tomorrow and it was, you know, being my internship, I think I would push a lot faster to be driving, you know, the keyboard. Uh, just doing that has been really, really, like, informative. And I feel like I've learned the most just being the hands of somebody else and kind of being along for the ride. But 
trying to contribute, not necessarily succeeding. But yeah, uh, I think I would just be doing what I'm doing now, but way sooner, as opposed to the gradual way that it kind of coalesced in my head, became sort of like the best path. I think I would just immediately jump to that and be like way more aggressive and pushy about that. Like, I don't have any time to waste, man. Get out of my way. We got to type a lot slower. I got to hurry up and slow you down, I guess would be the best way to put it. You were talking going into this, but you just mentioned it. Uh, the benefits of the paired program. What have you seen? Are you sold on that as well, or is that more of something that you enjoy because it's what you're experiencing in your internship? Or? Um, you know, it's interesting. I actually did, at least in the context of the internship, I actually did paired programming, and I was kind of programming on my own. And um, you know, I think everyone as like a learning style. And so I, what works for me, I definitely won't say it works for everyone, but I feel like working in paired programming has been probably the most beneficial to me because I spent like a month programming, uh, working on some of my own projects and getting some input, but kind of was just off on my own. And I did learn some stuff, but it really didn't resonate in sort of a practical way. Like the stuff I was learning was cool stuff to learn, but like learning stuff that was immediately useful in like a work environment and just what it's like to work with like older people, like some older code. Like I was writing new stuff to do things and as opposed to like going on this journey with my like code partner through the wilderness of someone else's code and like trying to navigate that and like all those bin tools I had which didn't make sense really that are like useless because I'm working on one, you know, .py file. Like all the power of the bin thing does not really make sense until you're in the context of being in the deep end of like the real world like projects. So yeah, I'm still on pair programming. I think it's great. Um, I didn't, I honestly wouldn't expect to be a lot of people against it. Just like I wouldn't expect a lot of people to be like, no, not TDD, waterfall, you know, or something like that. So yeah, no, I'm for it. Um, in terms of Python specifically, as someone learning it, were there parts that were you know, easy to pick up versus some parts that just felt like were the hardest hurdles to get over and get comfortable with the language? Uh, there's, like, I've studied a couple, you know, cursory, I've had experience in like a couple of C languages, and so coming over to Python, I mean, first of all, it was really readable on a scale that I really wasn't ex like used to. I was not used to being able to read stuff. Um, but there are, some, there are some things in Python that I still am struggling to like understand. Like, I haven't really extracted 100% of generators and coroutines. Like, I'm still not sure what good a coroutine is for, for like anything. Like generators, I, I'm just starting to get a, like faster lists and you know, they have like speed on their side, but just um, just slowly like more advanced parts of Python as I'm encountering them. They're the ones that are kind of proving to be more challenging and also just, there's like, the nesting of things, like I was, just the other day, we were putting an order dict and an order dict and an order dict in a list. You know, or I think the list was on the very inside, and so you had to like get all the way to the tootsie roll in the center to be like unpackaging all these things. It was it was cool, but I was just kind of along for the ride. Like I was not getting all of it. Or uh, when I was trying to trying to work on some stuff, it's been really hard uh, to try and convert from another language, or uh, to, to try and like the guy who was doing like who's doing um, who's fun like uh, randomly generating stuff for his bots like he wrote a lot of that Java and I was just trying to like just going to another language from Python it's pretty much a shock when, like when I was reading books like Clean Code it was kind of like they would give these examples in like Java and I was just like oh my gosh this is it feels worse because I've been learning Python. <laughs> Well, um, so, I, so oh. what, what do you want to do now? Like, you had this internship, you learned yeah. some stuff. Where's your trajectory? It's. Uh, I think. I, I mean, I, I want to stay on the software development path. Um, I think it's a. I think it's a lot of fun. I think this internship was pretty stressful times, mostly in the sense that it's hard to believe that you can do it. 
but I think I'd like to. I mean, uh, none of the arguments I started at the beginning with to become a software developer have been like really disproven by my experience. Um, so I mean, I, I'd like to say, of course, uh, you know, there's a there's there's a, a lot more opportunities around Des Moines than I thought, but I thought I would just try and take advantage of anything that came along and uh, to use ruthlessly to my own benefit. You know, it'd be cool if I could make a lot of money. So, like, I mean, my mom's getting old. It's, like, it's a weird thing, but I would love to be able to, my, all of those responsibilities of dealing with my aging mom has been foisted on my sister because, you know, she makes more money than me. I'd love to be able to help out. Like, I'd love the freedom of not being a, like a bookstore janitor and feeling like I can actually contribute to things. I feel like, again, this is kind of weirdly, uh, I don't know, capitalistic or whatever, but yeah, I see no reason to, to, to deviate from the path. You also have more flexibility. Yeah, there's more options. Like, you know, maybe I want to move to Iceland. And you know who makes Python games out there? The guys who do EVE Online. You know? So that's like an option. Is uh, gaming where you want to end up? I, you mentioned that about your friend and, and just now. Um, you know, that's uh, the thing. Uh, my friend who is actually kind of becoming less and less interested and more and more jaded about the gaming industry. He's worked in the gaming industry for like 10 years. He's never shipped a game. He's worked on many like AAA titles, but his, you know, the company he keeps losing funding or goes out of business before he's done. So like his resume doesn't look great, even though he's, I believe he's a great engineer. Um, but I thought, I've been thinking about it, you know, and I just don't think that gaming is necessarily like professionally what I want because I I got a wife now she wants a cat I might need health insurance like wait, there's wait. practical things I need to take. So a minute ago she was your girlfriend yeah <laughs> she keeps telling me to stop calling her my girlfriend but it is sort of like the default thing in my head but my fiance uh, but I would like to do my ideally I'd like to do software gaming on the side like Unity is a free software development tools that you can use to make games I mean. I feel like that's something I can pursue on the side. And any kind of like tools that I get from learning software development outside of that can be much more easily applied to that than say the reverse, like if I was working in gaming and then also trying to do software development like on the side, I just don't think it would work quite as well in the reverse. Are you thinking of sticking with Python? I mean, right now, yeah, I love Python. Um, I, would be down for maybe like C sharp right well I'm pretty much down for anything but Python's by far is my favorite language of the languages I've studied like I I've been reading the Zen of Python that poem thing that they have on it and you know it's it's a great kind of manifesto around which to design a language so what's been the most frustrating thing about being a professional developer versus you know being in school or, or anything like that what's What's frustrating you the most about software development? I, I um, like I, I read some books and they kind of, and even in the books they talk about the challenge of working with somebody's, some previously written code. And even that, it didn't really like prepare me for like the shock of like we, I was working with this incredibly complex program where I couldn't find where I was before, like I actually had to start using the, the, like the Vim markers because I just couldn't find things and they were like, and I guess the most frustrating thing it really is, it's just like, wow, trying to translate someone else's thoughts from years ago who might not even be around anymore, who like, just like filtering through, I guess, I'm not sure if it's, a, it's called legacy code, but like just dealing with stuff that was already written is incredibly different than like the academic environment where you're basically kind of building everything from the ground up. And of course, you really understand everything. Um, there's also that fear that, like, if I commit to the wrong thing, I could destroy the company, <laughs> which you know I, I think goes away with time. But you know, when you're first starting out, and there's also safety guards now in place where you can't just commit to like production and like ruin the company. But it's sort of like driving that way. Like, I've got a lot of important stuff around me that I could ruin. But um, I mean, that was. That's pretty much it. I mean, I'm sure it'll change as I get more confident, more experienced in things. But just so far, just yeah, translating someone else's old stuff, and not to say that they were bad programmers or anything like, but just trying to understand. Sure. You know, painting stuff is hard. <laughs>
What are your favorite parts of Python? My favorite parts of Python? You know, uh, I just really, really like, and this is a really small thing, but you can do like list comprehensions. List comprehensions are great. Like this guy was teaching me how to do maps, and then I found out list comprehensions can do the exact same thing, only are way better in the sense of the very least that they're clear. Like that's not something that I really learned in like say C. And like I just think yeah, to the bad existence. And that could be like yeah. So I mean that I would say that's a small thing, but I mean every time every chance I could to use that, I do. Because I think it's awesome. And then, you know, or dictionary comprehensions or just like stuff like that. Just something that feels so like intuitive. Like, I want this to happen and I can almost just say, do this if this is what, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, I just love that. Can you talk a bit about how you found your internship and the process of applying for that? Uh, yeah, I actually came here to the Forge one night and I met a guy named Ben. Ben was like, I work for IMT. Do you want a job programming? And I was like, yeah. I mean, Ben was like literally like the second guy I talked to in Des Moines. <laughs> so I'm not going to say luck didn't play a huge role in this, because Ben actually went down to the, the apps department and was like, hey, do you guys need, need a programmer? I met a guy. And I didn't lie to Ben. <laughs> but I mean, I, I did talk myself up a little bit. But Ben basically arranged for me to have a meeting. I applied for a job. Uh, I went and met with them, I went and interviewed, and they were like, we don't want you for the job. And I was like, I get it, you know, I understand. But they're like, but would you be interested in an internship? I was like, oh yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, that was pretty much it. Like, I wish I had a lot more like dramatic rags to riches, Rocky tale, or like <laughs> overcoming adversity. I really kind of didn't overcome a lot of, it's not an inspiring tale of heroism, really sorry. <laughs> Like, I wish there was more to it, but that was literally it. I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> lucky. And I know you're supposed to work hard and make your own luck, but when it's the second person you talk to in Des Moines at the first event you go to, it just feels, I mean, it feels great being the recipient of it. And then internship feels great, but yeah, I wish it was cooler. <laughs> I'll, I'll borrow a question from some guy who does a podcast, but what is your favorite Python package? I like, um, there's actually a couple. I like, uh, the first one I really worked with in a professional context was OS. I like that one. Uh, Iter tools, I see a lot. I actually like unit test. I mean, I guess that's a, that's kind of a cop out since that's all the TDD stuff. Um, I kind of have been, because I've been more exposed to Django, I kind of, in fast, I do enjoy importing stuff from Django just because I don't know a lot about Django. So just importing like crazy stuff from like Django or Django specifically other stuff. But uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'd say probably unit test, OS, and uh, I don't think about that. But those are the two that I can think of right off the top of my head. They're pretty practical, but. I really like it also. Maybe, maybe is there math? Daytime. Yeah. No, I forget all that. Daytime. Daytime's awesome. I tried to do one time thing once, and I was like, nope, daytime, forever. Um, all right. Well, I uh, was just trying to make sure at the very least it was short. So thank you very much for coming out tonight. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, quick question, does anyone have any